What is going on guys, Jack here and welcome to episode 11 now of the Bristol Rovers career mode and first of all we're going into a game in the Capital One Cup, I think this is the round of 16 against Swindon Town and we are going to want to win this game because we've done so well in the Capital One Cup so far, we've knocked out Stoke I think and a couple of other really really solid teams and you know we should keep this going but you know it's a little bit unrealistic that we're here, but, you know, if we do get knocked out, I guess that's kind of realistic. Swindon Town are quite a good side, but, you know, they're not as good as Stoke, so I guess we do have a little bit of a chance if we do play as well as we did against Stoke in that last game. But, you know, this is the round of 16, and if we do get through, we'll see the, um, the actual uh, table here and uh, the tournament tree. And uh, we can see, well, who we'd be facing if we'd actually uh, beat Swindon Town. And we would indeed be facing, where are we? We'd be facing either West Bromwich Albion or Leeds. So, you know, not the hardest of teams considering all of the teams that are in that kind of uh, that uh, tournament tree kind of stage in the round of 16. You know, there's Tottenham in there. There's Arsenal, there's loads of really good BPL teams, but we start things off here very well, but unfortunately the goalkeeper manages to time his run off his line very, very well, but we do manage to pick up a free kick because he's holding the ball outside of his box, that is a foul, so we get it, and uh, I think I do actually take it with our centre-back here, but I'm not 100% sure, I'm pretty sure we take it with uh, Kenneth, yeah we do. And uh, going for the power shot into the uh, bottom right-hand corner. But unfortunately, I put a bit too much power on it. And uh, I didn't aim it in the right direction. Usually, I'm quite good at them. But uh, unfortunately, it couldn't trouble the goalkeeper there. Gareth, Gary Kenneth, I think his name is. He's got really, really good free kicks. And, uh, well, for, for a centre-back of his calibre, that's for sure. And he's got the power, power free kick trait, I think it is. So, you know, he can bang those in day in, day out. But, you know, that's the first one that we got... Of the actual of the actual career mode, I think, and uh, nevertheless, we do manage to score though with uh, Max Clayton. I think that is. I think that's John Joe Tool picking him out, and a fantastic through ball and a wonderful finish with his right foot. I think that is. Yeah, no, it's his left foot with his weak foot. What a great finish that is! But the goalkeeper didn't expect that. Really great finish into the bottom right hand corner. Absolutely twats the living daylight out of that ball, as my HD gamer would say, and. We do manage to make it 1-0. And we have most of the chances in the first half, to be honest. We were really dominating the, th the play. And uh, the possession was really going our way as well. But, you know, this is Swindon da Town. They're not really going to give up without a fight. And uh, you can see here a horrible mistake from um, Mildenhall. And they almost, almost managed to capitalise from that. I thought they would have scored that. And then from the rebound, I couldn't clear it outside my box. I probably should have held X to clear it. But luckily, Mildenhall manages to save the rebound after it bounces everywhere. And very fantastic save from him. But, you know, it could have easily gone into the back of the net off the post. And, uh, you know, luckily for me, it didn't manage to do that. And, uh, you know, they started to get back into the game in the latter stages of the first half. But nevertheless... We still managed to go into half-time, 1-0 up, very good result, playing very well, and at this rate, we're going to be going into the quarter-finals, I think it will be, uh, the round of, um, I think we're in the round of 32, or the round of 16 at the moment, yeah, round of 16, and then um, into the um, quarter-finals, and that'll be against Leeds or West Brom, that'll probably be an interesting match if Leeds do manage to beat West Brom, because West Brom do have quite a solid side. They've got Anelka in there. I know Anelka's quite a good uh, finisher of the ball. And uh, he's quite a good target man as well, if I'm right in saying. And uh, you can see here, though, in the 56th minute, they get very close. Coming through on goal, but just, just offside. I don't... I think that was very harsh of the um, assistant ref. But I think it was just his right foot that was offside there. Really, really narrow. And that could have easily been game over, really. That could have been 1-0. And they could have got back into the game. But O'Toole really should have capitalised on that shot there. But, you know, he doesn't have the best of finishing considering he is a CDM. So I, w I wasn't really expecting wonders from him. But Daryl Berry with a fantastic switching play. And Clayton crossing this ball in. And it comes to... I'm not sure who that is, actually. I think that, that might be Ellis Harrison or maybe Broghammer. I'm not 100% sure. But whoever it was, that was a very good shot. And Ryan Brunt really should have scored that. I do not know how he missed that. That was an open goal. And uh, to miss that from that angle, I was really disappointed with him. Despite the fact he's got nine league goals so far this season, which is very good. He's third 
uh, top goal scorer in the N Power League 2. But a really bad mistake from my defence. And they managed to equalise in the 80th minute. That absolutely stuck a dagger through my heart. I really wasn't expecting that. And I really wasn't expecting them to score either, you know. That was a real shame that they did manage to score that. Because I was really dominating the play up until then. Although they did have a few chances, you know. That was probably one of their best chances in the game. And they do manage to capitalise from that. And that does mean, once again, we are going to extra time. Just like with Stoke, we went to extra time with them. And luckily, we did just about manage to win on penalties. Because John Ruddy uh, didn't manage to save all of the penalties. And uh, it was Navarro that managed to equalise and get that goal in the 80th minute. And you can see there, although I'm saying I felt like I dominated, it wasn't really the true story when you look at the stats, you know. Six shots, three on target to five shots and three on target. But you can see here, the first penalty, because we are going into penalties, because I'm really bad with extra time and I just couldn't create any chances. And uh, yeah, we were 1-0 down. We really should have scored that with John Joe at all, but he missed it. And I've noticed when I've been taking penalty kick, um, penalty kicks uh, recently, you know, it's been fairly laggy, especially in penalty shootouts. And uh, luckily they do miss that one to level it up to one or we both miss two. And uh, the veteran Jill steps up and finishes it well down in the bottom of the uh, net. And uh, they do manage to score that despite diving the right way. I couldn't quite get to a hand, get a hand to it. And then I miss mine. Very disappointing. I think I was with Max Clayton if I'm right in saying. And uh, then they score that one. And again, I'm going the right way, but I'm just not getting the right angle on it. I should have went to the left a little bit and then dived. And to top it all off, I absolutely fluff up the last one. I promise you, I'm better at penalties than this. So far, it doesn't look like I have been. But we do lose 4-3 on penalties to... Um, to Swindon Town and that's really disappointing I thought we could have gone and won that game but you know nevertheless maybe next year we'll have a good or a better run in the Capital One Cup but obviously this year was not our year so you know maybe next year and um, maybe next year we'll get a bit more luck but you know we really should have scored that uh, sitter there with Ryan Brunt but unfortunately we didn't manage to do that and uh, it is I think yeah it's West Brom who went through on their penalty shootout so they're going to go through and play Swindon Town um, props to them for scoring and managing to beat me because I was going on a good run um, before that in the Capital One Cup and it's unfortunate that I couldn't do anything about that but anyway you can see the squad report here if you want to see any players pause the video and look at their stats because I'm going to be answering a couple more questions that I did get asked because those people that did ask me those questions well they didn't um they didn't comment in the last episode but I am going to answer them anyway and the first one is from Plus Labs channel and that is do you think Arsenal can win the t title and in my opinion I think that they have a chance to if they bring in some maybe a striker in January maybe someone like Balotelli although that's a little bit unlikely but you know a clinical finisher someone that's a little bit better than Bentner and someone you know that's back up for Giroud because Giroud's been playing very well but he's got a lot on his shoulders at the moment and you know I'm pretty sure that they're both injured so that's going to be pretty difficult and so is Theo Walcott so unfortunately he'll be out for the World Cup and uh, that's a real shame for England that's a real blow for us because you know he's a he's a quality player but anyway I'm getting off of track they really they really do have the potential to win it but I'm not sure if they're quite there just yet. Maybe next season, but I'm not sure. And uh, the other question is, what do you use to record and edit your videos? Well, first of all, I use the Elgato Game Capture HD, and I use their software to record my uh, gameplay. Uh, that is from Cosafish, by the way. And, uh, yeah, I use that to record and uh, to, edit my, um, to edit my videos and everything like that. I actually use a program called ScreenFlow, you know, not many people will probably know about this. It's probably because it's only a Mac program, but it's very, very good. I've been very impressed with it. It's about 50 quid. It's a lot better than Sony Vegas or, you know, any of those ex more expensive software. And it's definitely really, really good uh, price for your money. And uh, I'm pretty sure you can get it on Windows as well. I'm not 100% sure. I may leave a link down in the description below if anyone is interested in that uh, editing software. It's really good. You can uh, do lots with it, really, and it's very easy to use, very easy software. But anyway, back into the video. If you have any more questions, then feel free to ask me them. I will probably answer them uh, in the next episode, but of course, you know, uh, I may not as well. But I probably will. Anyway, 
You saw there that we had our Youth Squad monthly report and it was absolutely shit. I'm going to be honest with you. The, the players in there were just awful and for some reason it was telling me how to use Connect. I don't know why. It's pretty stupid. If anyone knows how to turn that off, please let me know because sometimes that does come up. But we're going into a game here against Torquay United and I'm not sure where they are at the moment but I really do like their badge actually. They've got a quite a nice badge. Might get that for uh, my ultimate team. It looks like quite a nice badge. Uh, but anyway, going into the game here you know Torquay United I'm pretty sure they're doing all right this season I think they're in the top 10 but we'll see the um the league table in a minute what I do know is we're still top of the uh, table on I think about 35 points no 38 points we're eight points ahead of Cheltenham Town now and uh, I don't actually think they're in the top 10 Torquay so you know this is a very good chance for us to take down uh, three points and straight away Broghammer I was playing him in this game because I saw that he'd reached 60 overall and also I'd also seen that our veteran midfielder Matt Jill had reached he'd, he'd gone up by plus one he's 32 I don't understand that I mean he's decreasing in stats but he's gone up by plus one if anyone can uh, tell me why that is I'd be Really, really interested to know because that's never happened to me on any FIFA whatsoever. I've never seen that happen. That is absolutely ridiculous, to be honest. Because, you know, EA's logic is when they hit 32, they turn shit and their stats need to go down because, you know, that's just how, how it is. But, of course, in real life, you know, players like Di Natale, he is still an absolute god and he's, he's 35 years old, you know. Uh, he's still playing at a top level and... Really, that is just proof that EA really need to change something in career mode uh, with potentials and uh, players decreasing because it's certainly a lot worse this year than it was last year, that's for sure. But you can see here that we do score. I think I was with Ryan Brunt, if, I, if I'm right in saying, correct me if I'm wrong. But yeah, I've, no, it was with Max Clayton, right. Max Clayton's starting to score a few more goals now, and that's with his right foot this time, not his weak foot. And he does manage to bang that in. I think that was a John Joe tool assist once again, and a nice assist from him. He's been doing very well as well. One of one of the main players in the team, actually. He's 62 overall at the moment. And that's how the game ended. You know, nothing happened in that game. And we managed to win the game 1-0 again. Another clean sheet. I think that's 13 clean sheets now for Mildenhall. Probably the top in uh, England. But guys, if you have enjoyed this episode of Career Mode and want more Career Mode from me, daily uploads, please like and subscribe. It really does help out my channel. And also follow me on Twitter if you want updates of when my videos are going to get uploaded. That's the best place to find out. But guys, I'm going to have to leave it there and I'll see you next time for another episode. Thanks for watching.